Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Life and Happiness Podcast, the show that takes you on a journey of exploration. We'll discuss tried and true methods alongside the latest trends of how to best live your life to its fullest and happiest. From psychology to meditation, science to self-help books, the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast will help you to discover what makes you happy and how you can live life being the best you possible. Happiness Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Alyssa Joe, and it is only the last few days of 2020. I cannot believe it. 2019 has been a crazy year. Um, I'm sure maybe not just for me, but for everybody. Um, you know, it's the end. It's the beginning of a new decade. It's the end of a decade. It's the beginning of a new decade. It's the beginning of New journeys, new adventures, new things in a lot of people's life. And I think it's really important to jumpstart 2020 with a healthy and happy mindset so you can be living the life that you want to be living, you know, live in a happy way and the way that you want to live your life. So how can we do that? Uh, what can we do at the end of 2019 to make sure that we are ready for 2020 to be living 2020 exactly the way that we want to, right? So it is only the last few days of 2020. You know, we need to detox. We need to detox our mind, our soul, and parts of our lives. You know, we need to filter out the things that that we don't need so that we can start we can start 2020 with a healthy and happy mindset. You know, we need a healthy detox. But sometimes we can't go completely off the grid, right? Especially this time of year. Um, it's filled with family and friends. It's Christmas. We're all busy, you know. Even though some of us are off school or work or whatever the case may be, you know, we're busy. We're visiting with friends and family. We still have lots of things to do. It's that time of the year. So how can we detox, um, you know, our minds, our bodies, and other parts of our life to make sure that we are ready? For 2020. So today I'm going to talk to you about, about detoxing. Um, detoxing your mind specifically. And then I'm going to jump into detoxing social media because I believe that 2019 has really been a year where social media has blown up even more than other years. You know, I think it's really hit quite a peak and it's, I think it's just going to keep getting bigger and bigger. More people are using it for so many different things. It's a part of our lives now, right? And so I think it's important to detox our social media because let's admit, you know, our life does revolve around technology these days. You know, our phones, our laptops, social media, you know, what's on Instagram, what's going on on Twitter. It's how we connect with people. Um, It's how we express ourselves for a lot of people as well. So I think it's important to make sure we're doing that in a healthy, healthy way, using it to our to our advantage because social media can be great. But I'm going to start with detoxing, you know, your your mind and kind of how you're feeling right now, this this chapter of your life, how to end this chapter. So first thing I want to talk about is your intention. What is your intention? You know, a helpful way to begin the detox process is to set an intention. You know, set the intention for the next chapter of your life. This helps you step into more of a dynamic in a conscious way, right? In a new dynamic, in a conscious way. Like, instead of, like, leaving it up to chance or, you know, what's going to happen, you know, what's your intention? What do you want? What are your hopes and dreams? Um, Take an inventory of all the things that you wish to grow in your life, you know? Maybe make a list and and see. If you you listen to one of my past episodes, um, I talk about, you know, Jump starting 2020 with a healthy mindset. I go through, you know, making lists and your, your goals for 2020 and some self reflection. And I think it's really important to do that to help detox your mind and kind of the filter out the things that you don't want, you know, go through your life and, and see where you want to grow, you know, dream big in terms of, 
of where you want to be. You know, if you could identify a word or a phrase that describes the over feeling of what you want to achieve, like what would, what would that be? You know, really dive in deep and think about that. Now, the thing that we need to do is we need to create physical solutions for emotional problems. Okay, so this is going to help us detox some emotion that's going on. People automatically take the idea of one emotion that it'll cancel out another or it'll fix something, you know? You know, if you're really sad or you're upset, you seek happiness. We seek, we seek high levels of happiness and, and our moods to try to cancel that out. But with negative emotions, it just calls to action. You know, when we're feeling low, that's a call to action, that we need to do something about it. Um, it can't just be ignored. You know, it can't, you can't just be justified by something. So by detoxing your mind, you know, you're letting go of emotional highs in place of creating actual solutions. So you can think about the actual, how you're really feeling about something and actually diving deep into why you're feeling that way and figuring out the root of the problem and dealing with that instead of just going through different emotions in your mind and just to cover it up, right? We, we tend to mask things. So by detoxing this, you can really figure that out a little bit more, figure out what you really want, what you really need. Another thing that I think is great for detoxing your mind uh, is to go for a long drive and just let yourself drive. Or if you don't drive, go for a long walk and just let yourself walk for a while. You know, when you're driving through neighborhoods or walking through neighborhoods, maybe things that you, maybe a neighborhood that you're not used to, something that's a little bit different, um, something that's not close to you, right? You know, you see how other people are living. You see them, you know, come home from work, go to work, go to school, living their life outside, you know, maybe they're doing yard work, shoveling the snow if you're in cold climates or whatever the case may be, you you see people living life and you do really realize how small you are in a more practical way than just, you know, staring at something big like the ocean or, you know, the big mountains or depending, of course, where you're living. But you just don't know what you don't know. And so by going for a drive or going for a long walk, you can kind of see things maybe in a different light, you know, keep an open mind and, and just see, you know, how, how small your problems really are, how small the world really is. You know, we're all just trying to push through. So get get yourself in that mindset to, to let go and just look how beautiful everybody's day to day life is because it's wonderful. And that, that's going to bring ease to your mind. And, you know, another really great thing to detox is to just give the place that you live, you know, whether you have an apartment or a house or even just like your bedroom, give it a new look. I know this can be hard around the holidays, um, but our brain constructs experience through props and single signals. Um, and those props, like they signal off emotions for us. They subconsciously are triggering negative or positive associations because that's how our brain processes our surroundings. So if we are changing, you know, what's surrounding us, our signals, our props, then we can change how we think and then therefore we can change how we feel, right? It all starts with inside of us. So if we can change those things around us, you know, if you're having, you're feeling really low when you're at home and very negative, change your surroundings. Try to get a new perspective. Detox a little bit, you know. It's also good to clean everything out and detox that part of your life. But get yourself some new surroundings so then you can change how you view things. And how your subconscious is associating with your your surroundings. And then I think another really important one is to place yourself. You know, make a chart with three columns. Uh, this is what I like to do. And on one side, write everything that you have feel that you have accomplished in your life. In the middle, write down your daily life entails. You know, your daily routine the daily things that you do, you know, maybe you, you you go to work or you go to the gym first and work or school, whatever it is. And then on the right side, put consistent habits that will lead you to what you want in the future. You know, things that you can do in your day-to-day life to accomplish more. You know, you, you can focus on a big picture. A lot of people will focus on the big picture of things and it causes you to overthink. It causes you anxiety. But by breaking it down into small habits, like day-to-day habits that you can do, 
it's just going to ease your mind. You're going to feel less overwhelmed. Like you can accomplish these things and it's going to declog your mind. It's going to declutter your mind from all these overwhelming thoughts. Oh my God, I have to do this, 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 and this instead of, oh, I could just alternate this thing in my life on a day to day basis and achieve the things that I want to achieve. Uh, my next thing would be to stretch your brain. This is a good detox by just picking up a book and learning something new. You know, go into 2020 with a new trick, a new hobby, a new fun fact, a new the thing that you, like, just something new, some more new information. Stretch your brain a little bit. Challenge yourself at the end of 2019. Uh, challenge yourself at the end of this chapter, right? So you can... And then I think a really important thing to do is just to ask yourself questions. I did touch on this in my episode about making the most of the last few weeks of 2019, but I'll add some more questions to help detox your mind. Uh, things like what's working in my life, what's not, what could be improved. Um, are there relationships in my life that are no longer offering me value or joy? You know, what's one habit that I feel I need to break? Um, is there any activities or routines in my life that are not worthy of my time? Am I wasting my time on something? Um, what's the biggest mistake I've made this year and what did I learn from it? What do I truly want and what's standing in my way from achieving that? By asking yourself these questions, it's like having tunnel vision for the things that you want in your life and there's no time for anything else. What serves me properly what can I do to get there? What's stopping me from doing that? You know, just be straight to the point with yourself. Stop overflowing your mind with all these things that you, they, that aren't serving you properly. Um, you know, just write it down. Journal, vent to yourself, whether it's a sentence or five pages of your thoughts. Write these questions down. Write your thoughts. Get yourself clear. You know, when you're detoxing and decluttering your mind, you just, you really just need, to know what you want. Make yourself clear. Draw yourself a straight line from where you are now to where you want to be. What are your obstacles? How am I going to get through them? And finally, we need to visualize. Visualize that straight line. What do you want in your life? Visualize how you're going to get there. Clear out all the things that you don't you don't need and imagine your life in a happy and positive way by thinking these positive thoughts, it's going to help put yourself in a positive mindset. Discard the things in your life that are just solely performative. You know, we can build our lives around the things that we think should be happening. The things that we think others, like that will look good to others or others will like. Um, Instead of just have like letting ourselves feel happy and doing the things that we enjoy. Um, So Unclog your mind from those things and just experience true happiness. Generally, happy uh, experiences are what we need in our lives because life is small and simple. And when we're going through experiences and we're doing our day-to-day lives and the things that we go through, that that's that makes us who we are. So who do you want to be? And then reconstruct your life around that. Clear your mind to those things that are going to help you become the person that you want to be in 2020. You know, make the most of what you have right now, but draw yourself a straight line from point A to point B. And then we need to restructure our digital life. Uh, like I said, you know, technology, social media, it's huge. It's taking over a lot of people's lives and it, we can use it in a really healthy way, but we need to know how to. We need to know how to filter out the things that don't longer serve us in the virtual world. It is time for a break, but don't go anywhere because I'm going to dig in deep on how we can detox our social media so we can use it to our advantage in 2020 in a healthy way to encourage a happy life. So stay tuned. Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? The DSMC America Still Beautiful podcast is a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Download the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast on iTunes. Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. We 
are back listening to GSMC Life and Happiness podcast. So, like I said, I'm going to dive in deep uh, into detoxing our social media. Social media can be a main trigger for a lot of us. You know, it's it can trigger the fact that we might feel like a lack of worth, that we're not worthy of things, that our life is not, you know, up to par with everybody else. And it can trigger, you know, that we need to be perfect. It's the pressure to reach these society standards. Uh, but we, what we need to do is we need to track our habits on social media. Are we opening up our social media and looking at pages that make us feel bad? Are we opening up social media every five minutes to look at, you know, someone's story that they might be doing right now that you're missing out on? What are your habits on social media? You know, do you go through, do you, or you just look at your own page and criticize your own page, what your own feed looks like. So track your habits. What are you doing on it? How often are you going on it? You know, maybe maybe take a journal and, and write these things down. And now, just like I said, with detoxing your mind by knowing your intention, you need to know your intention for social media as well. What is your intention of your posts? What is your intention for your feed, for your followers, the people that you follow? Your intention of like your entire account together. Why did you make this? Why are you on social media? You know, is it for business? Is it just for pleasure? Is it to get ideas? Or is it strictly because you like looking at other people's lives and it might make you feel bad about yourself? And you you just, you don't know, right? So you need to know your intention of why you're doing what you are doing on social media. Because then you can start filtering out the things that no longer serve you or the things like that's pointless. That you're clogging up your social media with, you're clogging up your mind with that aren't necessary. Where you can make room for more positive things. Uh... So is your intention, is it positive? Is your, the reason that you post that picture, is it to get attention from other people? Or is it to make someone else annoyed or to make someone else, someone angry, like in spite of something? Is it for yourself? Is it for other people? So you really got to know your intention for everything that you're doing on social media and check in with yourself next time you're posting a picture or posting a status or a story. Why am I doing this? Is it for me? Does it make me genuinely happy? Am I doing it in spite of someone else? So check in and know your intention. You know, if you're having a bad day and you want to post on social media, make sure that your intention is in a good place still. That you're not spreading negativity on social media. None of us like to scroll through our Twitter feed and look at a bunch of negative things. You know, a, like a lot of us like to go on social media because it can make us happy. It can be a bright thing in our day. We can see a funny meme or a funny story or see something from a friend living across the world and and that brings us joy in our lives. So make sure that you're spreading the type of energy that you want to see on social media as well. What are you seeing on your feed? You know, on your own feed, on your own page. Do you have a theme or a tone? Uh, What about the people that you follow? Does that have a theme or a tone? Like, are you, you know, you can really target exactly what you want on social media and and things that you're doing on social media for yourself so you really got to think of that um are you spreading the positivity on social media are you spreading the negativity so check in what's your theme what are you doing are you trying to one up on somebody else you know are you feeling content with what you're posting we compare and contrast lives social media is you know We might not even realize it. It can be very subtle. We don't even feel like we're doing it. But it's in our subconscious sometimes. We're scrolling through our feed and we see somebody traveling to XYZ and we're like, oh no, like my life isn't like that. Or my hair doesn't look that way. My body doesn't look like that way. I I don't hang out with my friends like that. Like, you know, we're comparing all the time even when we're not thinking. We're just scrolling through pictures and comparing ourselves. So why set your intention to scroll through your feed to following these people or having these people on your page that are just going to make you feel lousy about yourself? And a lot of time we tend to zone in on one negative person, one negative comment, instead of all the positive comments or all the positive followers or things that we have, right? And so you really got to check in with yourself and, and know where you're coming from and what you want out of it. Make your intention so that you set yourself up for success. 
align yourself with the things that you follow with the things that you're wanting to attract. You know, when we give out positive energy, we're going to attract positive energy. Same goes for social media. Just because it's digital, just because it's virtual, it's not any different. If we give out positive things on social media, we're going to attract positive things on social media. When we post positive pictures and we follow positive people, it goes both ways, right? We want to give out that positivity and receive the positivity. So set yourself up for success on social media. You know, we're told all the time that social media is bad, that we spend too much time on it. It's terrible. It's lowering our self-esteem, you know, but that's just a negative comment. If we are aware of the things happening on social media, then we are aware of our intentions and we can use it in the proper and healthy way. No matter what, no matter how much you filter out your feed, you are still going to see negativity. There's no way that you you can't. Uh, People will post things or, you know, you'll things happen on social media but if you you're aware of those things and you know your intention you're not going to compare yourself you're not going to feel lousy about yourself you're not going to dive into that negative comment because you know your intention you're aware of those things then you can use social media in a healthy way and you know there's an update on a lot of the phones i don't depends on kind of what phone you have but you can see how much screen time you actually have and I think it's really cool because it's, it's a wake-up call for a lot of people to realize how often we're actually on our phones, how often we're actually on social media. But it doesn't have to be all bad. We have to use it in the right way. And so once we detox our social media and our mindset towards it, then we can use it positively and it can benefit us. We can have a lot of fun with social media. Of course, making real connections and spending time with people is way more important. But we are living in a world where social media is very apparent. So we need to adapt to these times and use it in a healthy and proper way. It's not going anywhere. So we just need to use it properly and know our intentions, be aware of the things that are happening so that we can have a healthy mindset with it. Instead of feeling bad about ourselves for being on social media and using it and enjoying it, we just need to practice on detoxing and filtering out our feeds so that we're using it in a way that serves us. Social media will take a toll on you if you don't use it in the way that works for you. And it's different for every single person. That's why you got to go through your things and really filter out the stuff that's not serving you anymore. You know, detox it and it can uplift your spirits. Our social media is like align with us instead of making us feel crappy. When, when we are in line with this positivity and the things that we want in life and that reflects in our social media... It makes us feel good. We feel aligned with with our lives and it doesn't make us feel crappy. So I'm going to dive in into just some different social media platforms and kind of ways that you can you can detox them. I think this goes for, for quite a bit of them. But like for like Twitter and Instagram and stuff, you know, update your design. Update your mood, your profile, your theme, like I mentioned before. Your profile picture. You know, maybe you're a yogi and you want to put your profile picture as a cool yoga pose that you're doing. That's awesome. Do that. That's what you want to channel. Maybe you want to channel more yogis and and get that kind of thing into your life. So target the stuff that you want. Um, maybe you can follow some new people that you're now interested in. But I think a really important one, I mean, this can be petty. Oh, you got to unfollow people that aren't serving you or blah, blah, blah. But you really do. (laughs) Like, by unfollowing the people that are making you upset or the accounts that are making you upset just because of their posts, you know, that's not, you're not doing anything wrong by doing that. You're putting yourself first and knowing that this account is making me sad. This account is making me compare myself. I don't feel good when I look through this account. So why do it, right? So hold yourself to that. Unfollow the people that aren't serving you anymore and then follow new ones. Like I said, if you're now interested into yoga, it's your new hobby that you you just kind of started at the end of 2019, follow more yoga pages. Follow more yogis and instructors or whatever the case may be, right? Like I said, when you, you can channel positivity and you're going to attract that positivity. So follow more yogi people, more yogi people will follow you. <laughs> it's just an example. But by doing that, you're filtering out the things that are no longer serving you. Go through your tweets or your photos and and see if there's anything of yours that you actually want to delete. Um, 
I know we can sometimes post things and look back and be like, oh, why did I do that? You know, really think about it. Are you going to be applying for some big time jobs? Is there stuff on social media maybe that you shouldn't have on there? Um, take those things off. Take the stuff off that you're not 110% proud of because, like I said, social media is so apparent in our lives. It's so huge. Everybody looks at it. Your potential employers, your friends, your family, your friends of your friends of your friends of your friends, your everybody is looking at it. So make sure you have the stuff on there that you actually want to have on there that you're proud of. Um, you know, if you love Twitter... Um, and you have like saved drafts or something, cause I know on Twitter you can save drafts, you can kind of save thoughts if you don't want to post them right away. Well go, go through them and see if there's any that you want to delete or things that you want to add. Um, on Twitter you can also make a list. So you can make a list of like happy tweets or like funny tweets or, you know, if you need a good pick me up. So like make yourself a list of like hilarious tweets that you like. So you know, next time you're sad, you can go to your Twitter list and just laugh at some funny tweets. Um, with Instagram, like I said, go through your photos, especially like your saved photos too. I know you can like make categories on your Instagram from your saved photos, like workouts or like haircuts or I don't know, whatever, it, whatever it is, but go through those and go through who you're following and, and your own highlights. Cause like, you can save your highlights to your, your page. People look through all those things. So make sure everything that you have on your social media, you want on your social media, delete the things that are no longer you anymore. Or that you don't want in your life going into 2020. You know, by doing all these things to your social media platforms, you're automatically just taking out the things that don't serve you. You're detoxing the things that you don't need. And you're making room for more positivity, for more happiness in your life. More genuine, positive emotions in your life. Positive things to come to you. Now, doing all these things to your social media, it's going to help you detox. But... The best way to detox from social media, of course, is to take a break completely. Um, I know that a lot of our lives don't allow to do that. Um, but maybe the holidays are a good time to do that. A lot of us aren't working anymore. We have a break from school, whatever it is. And, you know, maybe, maybe even just a week. You have five days, a few days to just completely get out of social media. That is the healthiest detox. But I do suggest, you know, filtering everything from your social media feeds before. And then when you go back on social media, you're going to have your clean feed with all the positive things in your life. And you're going to feel so good. So, so good. It is time for another break though, but don't go anywhere because when we get back, I do have some more tips about detoxing your social media, the real benefits of what it does for you. And, you know, if you can't completely cut out social media altogether, even for five days or a week, I'm going to give you some more tips on, on how to detox from social media without completely cutting it out. So stay tuned. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. listening to GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast. Like I said before the break, I'm going to give you some more tips and tricks um, about detoxing from your social media, the benefits that it does give you. I think a huge benefit from detoxing from social media is breaking the social comparison cycle. You know, it's proven that we frequently use social media to compare ourselves to others. I did touch on this before the break. 
But by breaking this, uh, you know, by breaking the comparison cycle, you can boost your self-esteem. Um, you're going to stop feeling so competitive. You know, even if you aren't aware of it, social media brings out our competitive side completely. And, you know, the main basis of social media networks, such as like Facebook, is to attract attention to your posts. You know, Facebook, Instagram, you know, you want your likes, you want your followers. Uh, each reaction and comment is a measure of how popular a particular post is, which can make you strive to outdo others and even outdo yourself, you know, to not be authentic anymore. So taking this break, you know, you can stop feeling the competitiveness. You can, you can stop the comparison cycle, ease off, you know, maybe get a new mindset going in. And then if you're doing all the, like, the decluttering of your social media before taking this detox of completely cutting it out, then when you get back on, it's like a fresh start without completely deleting your accounts and starting on all over. But then you just have the things that serve you and the things that you really want. Um, doing this can really just improve your overall mood. Social media can bring you down. Um, and the more time that you have away, you're gonna really feel a connection to reality. To not your virtual reality, but the, the real reality. <laughs> um, and you're just going to improve your overall mood. You're not going to be focused on how many likes you're getting, how many followers you have, or what Cindy did in Mexico last week. You just got to, you'll be able to focus on the things that make you happy outside of your phone, outside of social media. Uh, here's a big one for me personally. It's uh, conquering your fear of missing out. I suffer from like severe FOMO, severe, severe fear of missing out. Um, seeing what everyone else is doing and, you know, kind of knowing what people are up to and, you know, if my friends are all doing something, it's like I have to be there and it's been a really big struggle for me and social media has has really made it apparent that, you know, you can always see what people are doing. You can always see what's kind of going on in other people's lives. Oh, are they all, are they going to Mexico? Are they going on a trip? Or are they doing this and this? And it's like, uh, and you, you kind of, you know, it makes you feel like you're missing out on things. And so by taking this detox, you can conquer that fear. Um, when you first start your detox, you're definitely going to feel like you're missing out on things, like you're missing out on what's going on, what's going on in people's lives. But then you're going to feel like this sense of relief that like you just don't care because you shouldn't care. You should just focus on yourself and what you're doing and know that like the things that you're doing in your life are great too. Uh, that notification number makes it harder to stay away. You know, when you're sitting there and your, your phone's going off and notifications from Instagram, you kind of want to check it. You're curious. So by just detoxing from that, you know, you're not reaching to grab your phone. Uh, those people who become addicted to social media can end up like destroying their personal and professional relationships. And because you just, you're so focused in on what's going on online that you're not focused on like your relationships with people or like your work, right? So you can minimize this effect after your detox by scheduling like your time on social media. I know this kind of sounds weird, but like I said before, you got to track your your habits on social media, how often you're going. So if you are someone that is really addicted to social media, I really highly suggest scheduling your time on social media. Like for me, I have a problem with waking up in the morning and like that's the first thing I do and then I get hooked on it and then I end up being late because I'm like scrolling through things and like so now I'm really focusing on 2020 is to like when I wake up, I'm not allowed to check my social media until I'm like out of bed, had my cup of coffee like later on, right? Like I can't just like lay in bed and do that. It's going to definitely get me out of bed sooner because you have nothing to do other than wake up or sleep, of course. If your alarm's going off, you know you have to get up, then get up, right? Um, so schedule your times, you know, maybe if you do, you can check it once in the morning when you're drinking your coffee. You're allowed to check it maybe not all day and then you're allowed to check it in the evening for like X amount of time. So if you are really addicted, try doing that Um, because I know that it's hard to completely cut cut it out um especially this is like another tip if you don't want to completely cut out social media for a week but just like set up times for yourself i'm allowed to check it once a day instead of like a hundred times a day i'm allowed to check it once a day pick my time wisely and i'm allowed to check it for x amount of minutes and you can kind of slowly detox that way as well so you're not as focused um so that's a good way to do it because i know it's it can be hard to completely 
detox from social media. Maybe you need it for work or for school or something like that. So try doing that. Schedule yourself your times for social media. Um, another benefit from doing all this, though, is just connecting with the real world. Again, spending more time with your friends and family. You can pick up an old hobby. Spend more time outside doing things for you. You're gaining free time by not being on your phone, by not being on social media. Um, another thing, by detoxing from social media for a week, you can stop obsessing over your past. Maybe you're somebody that spends a lot of time looking at your ex and that makes you feel crappy about yourself or looking at old friends or something like that. So by taking some time away from like focusing on that, it can help you move on from things uh, that you need to move on from. And then finally, I think the most important is just living in the moment. Without the distraction of social media, without your phone, you'll be more present in life, more present with yourself. You have more time for some self-reflection, some self-awareness, knowing what you truly want, what you need, and you're just going to have a clear mind for 2020. Clear mind for how you want to use social media in 2020. You know, the way that you want to use it in a positive, healthy way for yourself. I know that we can't always cut it out. And I know that, like, detoxing from it, it can be difficult because it does take over our lives. But by doing, like, little things, and I think it's really important to declutter your feed, declutter your your own feed, who you follow, your own posts, and then taking your break from social media. So when you do get back, it's like a restart of, like, the positive things you want. Um, If you can, maybe, like, detox from it until, like, after New Year's. And then you can open it up on January 1st and be like, ah. 2020, new me, new social media, feels so much better. Um, and then to maintain uh, doing this detox with social media, you know, like we can't always just like take time off of it. Like I said, school, work, life happens. Um, but designate a detox day or two, maybe even like once a week or even like a week every month, whatever works for your schedule, whatever works for your mind because it's different for everybody. But it's healthy to maintain detoxes from social media so that we can continue to use social media in a healthy way throughout the entire 2020 year, not just at the beginning. Um, and just always be filtering out things that don't serve you anymore. Maybe check in every, every month of like who you're following, your posts, the things that you're attracting, positivity, negativity, by checking in with those things once a month, we can filter those things out and continue to use it in a positive way for ourselves. And one of the most important things I think I'm going to tell you as well in this episode, the power to power down is all yours. If you're feeling overwhelmed by social media, if it is affecting your life in a negative way, turn off your phone. Power it down. Tune out of the cyber world and just become present in reality at any time you want. Because you have the power to do that. No matter what time it is, it is your phone, it is your social media, turn it off. That is your power. Once you find a healthy balance between, you know, your virtual life and your reality, you're setting yourself up for a happy and healthy life. So you just got to know your limits. You can set boundaries for yourself. Like I said, set your times you can go on social media, set your amount of hours you can go. Set your detox days once a month or once a week, whatever you want to do. And then just simply remember that you can power down. So that is all the information I have for this episode. I hope this helped you to try to detox some things out of your mind, detox the things out of social media so you can set yourself up for a happy, great, positive 2020. There's only a few days left of 2019. We're going into a new decade. It is super exciting. And social media and everything, it's so apparent in our lives. So let's use it in a positive way because it's its definitely a great tool that we have in our lives. And we're lucky that it is uh, so apparent in our lives. I think we just got to use it properly. So figure out what works for you. Do your detox reset your mind, your social media, your soul for 2020. And you're going to be living a happy and healthy life in the new year. Thank you so much for listening. As always, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like and follow us on social media, and leave a five-star review. I hope you enjoy the last few days of 2019 
and I hope you enjoy just detoxing yourself from your virtual world and from the things clogging your mind. Till next time, I cannot wait to look forward to sharing more information with you. Thank you. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Life and Happiness Podcast, part of the GSMC Podcast Network. You can find the show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcasts on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type in GSMC to find all of our shows from the GSMC Podcast Network, from sex and relationships to health and wellness, life and happiness, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's episode of the Golden State Media Concepts Life and Happiness Podcast.